Are you looking to update your Anytone 878 UV2 Plus with the latest firmware version 2.02N? Installing firmware can be very frustrating, especially if settings get reset after switching over to the new version. But there's a simple workaround to prevent that from happening. Today, we'll show you how to easily get your Anytone 878 UV2 Plus up to date in just a few steps. One quick note, be sure the firmware you update to is safe to download. Sometimes bugs emerge after new versions come out, so always double check our download page and there will be a warning if any bugs have been reported. Now before we actually read from the radio and start communicating with the radio and the computer, uh, it is a good idea and it's recommended to turn off APRS and GPS, that way there's no way the radio can try to transmit while it's connected to the computer. Now I personally have never had trouble with this, uh, but I don't typically keep it turned on anyway, but it is a good rule of thumb to turn off. So you'll want to go to menu and then go up to APRS and we'll go ahead and make sure the intervals are set to off. And then I also want to turn off GPS. Um, and so you just go into GPS, GPS on slash off and make sure it is also set to off. So let's jump into the computer and go ahead and update the radio. So first thing you want to do is download the new uh, firmware for the radio. So open up a web browser and go to bridgecomsystems.com. And then from here, you can go to our support section and navigate to whatever kind of radi radio you have. So in this case, we have the 878UV2+. So we are going to scroll down here until we find the firmware for that radio. Here we go, it is right here. So I can click on that. We can see firmware and driver right there. Um, so this is the latest CPS driver download. It would appear. Perfect, so we just click this link here and this will show you whatever the latest is, but also have older versions. So if you have an older version of the radio or older firmware, you can download that older version. So we want the latest and greatest. There we go, so just save this to somewhere safe on your computer. I'm going to put this on the desktop. Perfect, so it's downloaded there. Uh, now at this point we can get out of our web browser. And what you want to do from here is right click on this file it downloaded and then click uh, extract all. And this will basically take everything out of the zip folder and turn it into normal folders. There we go, extract, and this will just allow us to actually work with the files. Perfect, here we go. So at this point, we want to install the brand new CPS. So go ahead and install that CPS. Now typically with firmware updates, you can update with the old CPS or you can get the new CPS and update from it. Um, typically it doesn't matter which way you do it, but what I like to do is download the latest one and then update the radio from there. So we wanna go ahead and run this program, click yes, and then select your language, and then continue with the setup wizard. Now there is something to note, it will automatically try to install it on the D drive. Uh, you don't want to do that. You actually want to switch it over to the C. C is in Charlie. So just click Browse and then click C. Uh, most systems have a D drive, but it's really just made for recovery purposes and it's not very large, so you can run into trouble that way. And some computers don't even have one at all. So click Next and then go ahead and I like to create a desktop icon and then we can Next and then Finish. Perfect, there we go. So we can get out of here, go ahead and launch the CPS. And here it is. So we have the, the new CPS installed. So now at this point, we need to, uh, what I like to do is back up the radio because when we do this process after the update, we're going to perform a, an MCU reset uh, and that will complete the update and that will actually wipe everything on the radio. So you want to back up your code plug first. And to do that, I'm going to open up uh, the current version of CPS that I've been using and we'll go ahead and back up the radio. So just plug the radio in with your USB cable. Make sure it's turned on just like that and then we will plug this into our computer. 
And then from this, uh, you want to go to the, the COM port section, make sure we can select and see the radio. Click on that, OK. And then read from the radio. So you want to read um, everything. Uh, now, in this case, just to speed it up, I'm not going to read the entire digital contact list. Uh, but if you were doing this for real, you would want to read everything on the radio. Perfect, there we go. Uh, so we have read from the radio. And now at this point, uh, what we want to do is go up here to save, and then save as. And we can simply save this code plug to a, a destination. We'll save it to the desktop. Perfect, go ahead and save that. And now we have a copy of the code plug. Now, like I said, you would want to go ahead and, and import or, or read those digital contact lists as well. Uh, but in this case, we're not going to do that just to save time. It won't make any difference. So we can get out of here at this point. We have our code plug file. So when we complete the update, we can re-import that. And now it's time to do the update. So first thing we need to do is put the radio into update mode. And to do that, um, what you want to do is turn the radio off and then you're going to hold down the push to talk button on the side, uh, which is the normal button you use to talk on the radio, as well as the colorful button on the top, also known as PF3. So you're going to hold both of those down at the same time, uh, just like so, and then turn the radio on while holding them down. And you can see that red light starts to flash. So that means we are now in update mode. So you can plug your cable in. Um, from here, perfect, and now we can continue with the process. Now I will note, when you have the radio connected to the computer and transferring things, it's a good idea to turn, turn off the GPS and APRS functions of the radio, uh, just so you don't ever have the radio try to transmit while it's plugged in. Okay, so from here, what we want to do is open up the new CPS that we installed and then go to Tool, and then Firmware and Icon Update. Now at this point, we need to open the update file. So that's one of the files that we downloaded. So click Open Update File. And then we can open up that folder that we extracted. And then find our firmware version. So typically, it will have the radio name, and then the version, and then say FW. That's standing for firmware. And then in, inside of here, there is an SPI file. So go ahead and open that file. There we go, it succeeded. And now we can simply write that to the radio. There we go, so it is complete. Now we can see the radio is booting up here. Uh, now once this is done, uh, we should have the firmware, but to finish it, we have to do one more step which is resetting the MCU. Um, so to do that, we'll go ahead and, and disconnect it here. And then turn the radio off. And we're going to perform a similar procedure, but it's a little bit different. So this time, we're going to hold down the push to talk button, as well as the button directly below it. So you can see on the side here, push to talk. And then this is called the PF1. We'll hold them down and then turn it on. And we're going to keep holding them down uh, until we get this to reset here. So perfect, it wants to know if we want to initialize it, so we can let go of those buttons now and click yes. And it will just initialize the radio as normal. And then after that, we can go ahead and put everything back on the radio. There we go, so we are set, just click confirm. Uh, you can obviously set your date and time, uh, but the easiest way to do that is with GPS anyway. So at this point, we can plug the radio back in, and we just have one more step to do, which is load our code plug. There we go, so it's plugged back in. So now over in your CPS, go ahead and click on open. And then we'll go to our desktop, 
and click on the code plug that we just uh, saved beforehand. Open that and then click on the COM ports button. There we go. We can see the radio and then go ahead and write to the radio. Just like that. Now obviously in this case you would select the digital contact list as well, but to speed it up we're not going to do that right now. Perfect, there we go, so it is complete. Now let's see if it works. Perfect, there we go, so we have everything back on this radio that we did before. Uh, doesn't look like it took the, the image, the custom image we had, doesn't look like it took those across. Um, so you may have to put those images back on your radio after you do the firmware update. So just to show you this radio now has the latest firmware, we'll go into menu and scroll down to settings and then device info. And there we go, we can see version 2.02 in and that is the firmware version we just installed. Updating your firmware is a lot like getting a haircut. It might be a little bit annoying at first to drive to the barber, but once it's done, you feel refreshed and don't have to worry about it again for a while. Don't forget to click the link down below to watch our Anytone 878 UV2 Plus Quick Start Guide so you can start transmitting as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. I'm Cody W3AMG and as always, 7-3.